Glory to God. Hallelujah. Once again, I'd like to welcome you to Sunday Message. I'd like to thank the evangelist for lifting me up this morning. Glory to God. I feel all your prayers and your strength. Glory to God. I'm excited this Monday because guess what? This is actually the first Sunday. That makes it communion Sunday. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't worry. If you have any juices or crackers or you can go to your, your, your place because, you know, you still mobile a little bit and you can do your thing. When, but uh, it, you can get your stuff together. I'm going to give you some time at the end of the services when we're going to have it. So we're going to have a little bit of time. Glory to God to get your stuff together. And for those that are there, I'm still working on getting it there so that it comes into you in one piece. Glory to God. And we're working on those particular things. So you just keep bearing with us because the logistics are coming. And it's coming out pretty good. Glory to God. Amen. You won't be disappointed. I truly believe that. For those that are on the line, I thank you for coming. I thank you for the ones that are on Facebook Live. And I'm going to say good morning to Nana Gaddy. Glory to God. 101 years old and watching us from her iPad. Glory to God. I thank you right now for even being with us. Glory to God. Just to, just to know that you're in the presence has just pushed me up over the level. Hallelujah. With with all that is being said, I'd like to turn this over to Evangelist Sunshine so that she may bring forth the announcements this morning. Glory to God. Nana Gaddy, we thank yes. you for joining us. We are so glad that you would join us at Word of the Lamb Ministries, Worldwide Ministries. We would like to let everyone know and invite everyone to our Monday evening Bible study at 7 p.m. On Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, our prayer line beginning at 7 p.m. And we have a fantastic Friday Encouraging Word at 7 p.m. We would also like to announce that on our website, www.wordofthelamb.org, we do have a service page with the time and the phone number for the teleconference line. And all of our information is just a click away. And we have a mobile friendly website, which works great and looks great on mobile phones. We would like to encourage everyone to drop us a line, a Facebook comment at our Facebook page at Word of the Lamb. Give us some love and some likes and let us know how Jesus Christ has impacted your life. Give us a praise report if you'd like to know and would like to receive prayer in private or would you like to have a request or get to know a little bit more about what must I do to be saved? Contact Pastor Bryant through his email at wordofthelamb at outlook.com. That is wordofthelamb at outlook.com. If you're interested in speaking engagement and you would like Pastor Bryant to grow to you, feel free to drop us an email at wordofthelamb at outlook.com. All donations are tax deductible, and we would appreciate any love offerings and donations you may have. And you can also send us a line, draw us a letter, and you can do that via mail as well. Our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 320391, Hartford, Connecticut, 06132. And it is also on our website, again, P.O. Box 320. 
Glory to God. For those that are on Facebook, glory to God. You see that I um, hold up the uh, sign that says the, the times. But I'm also holding it up for those um, also. And it seems like it's backwards to you. But for those that are on a certain device, I uh, think it's YouTube maybe, that it might show up as um, in the correct way. I am just making sure that everybody will have the opportunity to read them back and forth. All of the information is on here. We hopefully and respectfully thank you and we hope that we see you at each and every one of our services. Come on out and be a part of what we're doing because no matter what's going on, we're growing, growing, growing. And God is adding to the church daily. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I know that you're feeling pretty good today. Glory to God. Good morning, Bridget Gaddy. Hallelujah. We thank you right now. Glory to God. We like to give honor to the people on the West Coast and the ones in um, the East and ones in um, Houston, South Carolina. We thank you for, for being here. We thank you for um, ones on the line and in the state of Connecticut and in the state of New York and every other places that they are. We thank you for being here. We appreciate you. We thank you right now. See, because we are a church without walls, meaning that we reach in every place that needs to be reached. And glory to God. Not only will we reach them from Facebook, when we reach them on the conference line, but we're going to reach them by walking in the middle of areas and having conversations. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Have you noticed that during the beginning part of this year, it has only been, what, four, five days, six days? That a lot of stuff has happened in six days? Yes. You know, this is it has been a been a little shake up in the in in, in the spirit. You know, some things have gone your way and some things are going away. Glory to God. You know, God God is God is doing some stuff and you know, reshuffling some things. But first and foremost, I have to put it to you like this. Father God, in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for everything that you have done and everything that you will do. Lord, I ask you that you have your way, not only on this conference line, but on Facebook, Father, that they will look and be set free. Father, that chains will be broken, that individuals will go out there and holler glory. Father, I strengthen the mindset and hearts of the people, Father God. And God, I open up my mouth and that your words come out, Father, that it is not me, but it is you. Father, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Father, have your way today in everything that we do in Jesus' mighty name amen and amen and amen glory to god i thank you father for allowing me to preach with some power hallelujah in the name of jesus hallelujah have you have you took the opportunity good people of sitting around and you you're feeling pretty good and your, your body got a little tingle in it and you know, some things are going on, and even the things that might have upset you is not upsetting you anymore. So you got a handle on it. You know, as I said before, you put the word on it. Glory to God. But I, I want to talk to you a little bit. Today, Um, I don't have a... Um, jump up and down message well maybe I do it depends on how you feel I don't have a, a message that's going to um, do anything but teach you some stuff and I want to I want to I want to start somewhere and I want you to to understand this right that um, no matter what we're doing no matter what was going on you're slowly being changed. Glory to God. You're slowly being changed. That's not the title that I give you, and I'm. I usually have been taught to, you know, to give you the title and my aim. My aim is, it today is that you'll, 
take the opportunity to accept the change. It even in the midst of that, but we'll get to that in a few. I want to talk to you just a little bit, if amen, and I, I want y'all to, to, to um, as I told every individual on the line before, you can have your Bibles with you. Everybody should have their sword, their Bible, Bible, their Bible app, their, their, their whatever it may be. I don't care what particular version you use. I use the King James Version, but I also use many others um, from the Standard Version to the English Version to the International Version to um, the Hebrew Version. We, 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 we use a lot of Bibles to do the things that we need to do and to dig like we need to dig because we want to be a little bit, um, we want to get a better understanding of the Word. Amen. So today we're going to spend a little time just getting a little bit of understanding of the Word. So I asked y'all to park your, your Bibles in Acts, the 6th chapter, but that's not where I'm going to start at, but that's where we're going to end up at. So if you like to just sit there for a little bit, but if you like to to, to, to ride with me, as they say, and where we're going, then and amen. I'm starting right now in Deuteronomy, and I'm going... To speak a little bit in there, glory to God. I'm, let me just let me just read that for you. Deuteronomy five um says like this, um, Moses. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. He was buried in a valley in the land of Moab, over Geth Bethpor. But no man knoweth the sculpture until this day. And Moses was a hundred and twenty years old when he died. His eyes was not dim, nor his natural force abated. Moses died, and no one found his grave. Moses died, and no one found his grave. I submit to you that his spirit is in heaven. I submit to you that an angel came and picked up his spiritual body. See, I, I want to talk to you a little bit, but before I talk to you a little bit, I want to tell you a little something. I want to talk to you about transfigurations. Transfiguration. According to Webster, transfiguration means a change in form or appearance. It also means an exalting, glorifying, or spiritual change. I want to quickly talk about a couple of uh, transfigurations. See, there was a change of appearance when Moses was transfigured. See, Exodus 34 tells us in the 29th verse and to the 35th, it says, And it came to pass that when Moses came down from the Mount Sinai and the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, when he had came down from the Mount, that Moses was not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron, and all the rulers of the congregation returning to him, and Moses talked with them. And afterwards the children of Israel came nigh, and gave the and he gave them the commandments, all that the Lord has spoken to him on Mount Sinai. Until, until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. Transfiguration. There's a change. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak, to him he took off the veil until he came out and he came and spake and the children of Israel unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded 
And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone, and Moses put the veil upon his face again, until he went in to speak with the Lord. Once again, there is a transfiguration. There is a change of appearance. There is a change of some things. Glory to God. Acts the 6th chapter. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to bring you somewhere. Just, just, just be with me for a little bit. Hallelujah. Moses, the sixth chapter and the seventh verse says, And the word of the Lord increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of priests were obedient to the faith. First, I want to tell you just a little bit about some things. There is a change happening. I don't know if you can feel it, but I can. I believe that there's some things going on. I'm going to give you some stuff. And and Seth and and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. And then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and 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 the Cretans and Alexandrians and of Sicily and, and of Asia, disputing Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit. By which he spoke. They, then they, stubborn men, saying, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people. And the elders and the scribes came upon him and caught him and brought him into council. And set up false witness which said, This man ceases not to speak blasphemy words against this holy place and law. For we had heard him say that the Jesus, this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. There's a change coming. I want y'all to say that with me. There's a change coming. I need y'all to make sure that y'all believe that. I want you to put it in your heart. There's a change coming. Glory to God. And all that sat on the council looked steadfast on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel transfigured in front of them. When we are in the presence of the Lord, there is a glow that we have, and it shows on the outside. And what is seen on the outside, and that's what is seen by others. You see, what's seen by others is a transfiguration of you to the God that is in you. You're being transfigured little by little. And every day that you spend with the Lord, you'll find yourself being transfigured. That's why some people can walk up to you and say, I see the God in you. That's why they can walk up to you and say, blessed woman of God, out of the blue, because they see the anointing on you. Amen. I'm going to continue going, but I'm going to give you my title right now. I want my title is Smile. You're being transfigured. Glory to God. Mark 9 says it like this. Glory to God. Mark 9. 1 through 9. And he said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that there to be some that stand here, which shall not taste death till they seen the kingdom of God come with power. See, I want you to remember that word. I want you to go. We're going to go back to that. So remember that. After the sixth day, Jesus takes 
taking with him Peter, James, and John, and led them into the high mountain apart by themselves, and he was what? Transfigured before them. Transfiguration, it was a change. It was a change in appearance. There was an exalting. There was a glorifying. There was a spiritual change. And his raiment became shiny, exceedingly white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can white them. And there appeared unto Elijah them, Elijah and Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said unto, and answered, and said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Eliza. For he wist not what he saying, for they were so afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them. And a voice came out of heaven, saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And suddenly, when they had looked around, they saw no man any more, save Jesus, only with themselves. And it came down of the mountain, and he charged him that he should tell no man what they had seen till the Son of Man was risen from the dead. Now I want to I want to sit here and, and I want to talk to you a little bit. See, in the beginning in Deuteronomy, they tell you that uh, Moses died. We know that Elijah, we got picked up, right? Am I correct? Right? The Lord came and picked him up. So if, if Moses had died, what had happened? Because obviously he was in heaven, but how could he get there? Because Jesus hadn't rose yet to bring the individuals who were stuck. So what had happened? Well, what happened was, and this is what I'm reading. You know, this is scripture. I'm giving you scripture. What happens was that you have to turn to Jude. And Jude, the ninth verse, says like this. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bringing against him a rallying accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. I submit to you that when Moses passed away, that this physical body was being taken and put in a certain place and the spiritual part of his body was being taken up with Michael and the reason why I say that is for two reasons his body is passed but no one knows where the sculpture and where he's buried at two when it came to the transfiguration Jesus was looking at Elijah and he was looking at Moses and he was looking at the spirit of both of them because one was representing the, the, the law which was Moses and the other was representing the prophets. Glory to God. Transfiguration. There is a change. Glory to God. I'm teaching a little bit today. I just want y'all to know that. Glory to God. And then and we know that we know that Moses was checking on all that was fulfilled by Jesus in the law. And, and Elijah was checking on what was being fulfilled by the prophets. Now in order for this to happen, Moses' spirit had to be in heaven. Right? We know that because what we hear in, 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 in Jude 9 tells us this thing. But I submit to you that nobody rose from their grave until uh, unless God knew it. And it's, I would submit to you that the Lord was transfigured. Then figure it was a glimpse, was a peak, was a peak at the Lord thy God in all his divine nature. Transfigured. See, I submit to you that Mark 9 and 1, there the answer for it is in verse 3. It says that in Mark 9 and 1, it says, and unto this day that there are some that are, that are standing here that shall not taste death until they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. And 
In verse 3 it says, And his raiment became shiny, exceedingly white as snow, so no other fellow on this earth can see them. So they had seen the kingdom of God come with power because he was transfigured in front of them. What I'm trying to tell you, men and women of God, is that every day that you do something, every day that you move in your direction, Every day that you lean upon the Lord, God is transfiguring you. There is a change that is happening in your life. And there's some things that have fell off in your lifetime. If you look back about where you were, you can say that there's some things that fell off. And it looked like at this moment that it might have been easy, but you know that it came off with the hardness. I'm here to let you know right now. That there's a change coming. You're being transfigured. You're being changed in a form and in appearance. You're being exalted and glorified and it's having a spiritual change. These things are not only changing you, but they're changing the fact of what you're doing. And some of the things that you used to do last year, yesterday, you don't do no more. Habits that you had for years are starting to fall off. Amen. Stuff that was going on in your lifetime have become forgotten words. Amen. Stress that might have been holding you up in your past has finally come to an end. Amen. You can breathe a little bit better. You have a clearer vision of what you're doing because you seek the first the kingdom of heaven and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, when you seeking in that direction, that means that you're getting ready to get yourself transfigured. For it's the Bible tells us that any what creature who's what comes to, to, to Jesus, you're a new what? You're a, you're a new, new creature. You're a new person. So if you're a new creature, that means that you've been transfixed, transfigured, uh, transformed into something better. You have to remember that we're just dust of clay. We're, we're as they say, a vessel full of power. But yet we're still that same vessel. And every vessel is being fixed, being moved, being molded. And God is building us up. The base that we stand on is Jesus Christ. And we're being built like we have to be. But every once in a while, even in the midst of it, there's some flaws that still stay in there. So God has to break us back down and try to move that out. Because he wants everything in his structure to be sound and strong. So every part of you is being transfixed. You're being transfigured into the what the Lord has desired you to be. Now, the key is you have to be able to accept the transfiguration. It is not an easy process. If you think about the things that you've been through that you came out of to where you are now, there are some people who have, would never have made it. And there were some times in your life where you thought that you weren't going to make it. And there's some areas in your life that you said, I just can't take it. And there's some things in your life and you said, I'm going to fake it till I make it. And then there was times in your life when you said, I'm just going to have to give this to the Lord. Because I don't know what else to do. Amen. And on those times when you did those things, you found yourself to be freer. You found that those movements happened. That things were being moved away from you. They slowly started coming off of you. And when you give them to the Lord, it's almost like your shoulders get a little bit lighter. 
you start to get a little bit better. You start to get a little bit brighter. You start to get a little bit more smile. You start to get a little bit more things to do. And you start to be about your father's business. And when you're about your father's business, you'll start to you'll stop thinking about the things that are causing you and holding you back. And before you know it, you have already transfigured yourself into something that is even more spiritual. That your, your, your spirit man will be stronger than the fleshy man. Amen. And I want to say that in all honesty. Even though we are here at church with our walls, sometimes it might even be hard to make a call in. I'm not feeling like it. I don't want to move in this direction. I'm trying to do this, but things are trying to pull away from me. I'm going to call in. I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to hit the service, do whatever is necessary. And there might be something that distracts you. Something that will pull you away. Sometimes you consider it to be a better option. And it turns out when you get there that the option isn't good. You have to let your spirit man control your fleshy man. And when you get transfixed, when you get transfigured, when you get trans transformed, your spirit man be becomes in control. So when somebody has an attitude and speaks on you and say something, and instead of you going in and speaking to them the way you want to speak to them, or saying a couple of things that you had in your mind. You just turn around and put the word on. You know. And when you put the word on people. Sometimes they don't have nothing else to say. Amen. They'll just sometimes get quiet and catch an attitude and walk away. And you've done what you needed to do. Without having to go in any other way. See, because the enemy Amen. is tricky. He wants you to, to move back into certain areas. He wants you to, 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 to lose credibility. I mean, he even fought with the archangel Michael about Moses' body because he wanted it for himself. For whatever particular reason. Maybe he wanted it to put it into an area where everybody could find it. Because if everybody could find it, maybe they would have spent more time, you know, going over there and, 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 and praising Moses instead of praising God. See, the devil is tricky. So you have to be aware of that. But I'm here to let you know today. Right now, today. That remember when the Lord has need of you. Be willing. To do what he asks. Be willing. To do what's necessary. Remember to ask for forgiveness. When you do wrong. And let God. Transform you. Let him. Transfigure you. Into his glory. The word for the day is smile. You're being transformed. Formed. You're being transfigured. Smile today. Because of think about the things you've been. Think about where you are. And you can say to yourself, no matter what the situation may be. That God has brought you out and he took another opportunity. That he woke you up this morning. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. He gave you an opportunity to be here. Some people couldn't be here. It made you get up in your right mind. Some people aren't in their right mind. He touched you in all ways possible. You might have aches. You might have pains. You might have other issues and problems going on. But you made it. Through last night. You're here at this point. Let God transform you into him. 
So when, when people come to you and they see you, some of them are going to say, I feel the presence of the Lord. I see the God in you. And if they can see that, that means that your, your temple has been transfixed to being able to be seen from the in outside, from the inside out. Amen. So I employ you today to be transfixed. To be transfigured. Change some of the thoughts that you have, some of the things that you're going through. Change some of the thoughts that you have in the ways that you're doing it. And maybe, just maybe, you'll find yourself a little bit easier. I know the process won't be all that great sometimes. Sometimes it's going to be downright ugly. Sometimes you got to go through the dark spots, the dark patches, right? Just to get to the other side. But seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. All these things will be added to you. If God took the opportunity to love Moses so much, if God took the opportunity to send his son down for you, Imagine what he's doing to help you in your hour of need. Let him transfix you. Let him transfigure you. I know this might not have been that up and down jumping message. I know that this might not have been something that might not even stir some individuals. Maybe they're looking for something to move them a little bit more. But I guarantee you that somewhere along the line, you're going to need this. Because somewhere along the line, you have to transform yourself. You have to transfigure yourself from what you are into what God wants you to be. And Amen. if you're walking on this path, it's going to happen. It might not, it's not an easy process and it won't be fast. But... Every step that you take will bring you closer. You just have to stand the course. You can't back down. You can't move away. You can't stop six months in. Some people do that for their with diets. They get on a diet. Three months later, they they offer off of the things that they're doing because their little resolutions that they made if they fall apart of. But if you made this vow to the Lord, this way of saying I'm going to be transfigured by you, Father. Don't take it back. Let them finish the process. I guarantee you, you will like what you get in the end. You might start off as a Yugo and come out as a Mercedes. You might you might start off as a chip and end up as the biggest diamond. You know, you might start it off with a log camping and end up in a mansion. Glory to God. Amen. And, and, you started off looking at gold, and now you can walk on the streets of gold. Amen. Glory to God. Let God transform you. Let him transfigure you so that you can be what he desires you to be. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. 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 And amen. Remember, smile. You're being transfigured. Amen. Glory to God. May God add a blessing to the, this particular word. That it might bless you in some way possible. Lord, I know that there's individuals right now, Father, who are in this process, Father. Going through some things. Lord, I ask you that you have your way. I ask you that you finish the transformation, Father, that... You give them the strength, God, to continue to go in, Father. 
I know that the seas seem rough, Father. But I know that even when you stand up and look in their direction, everything gets calm. Lord, I ask you that you peek over here. Glory to God, that it will be a blessing in their areas. Lord, I ask you that you have your way on them and their families. I ask you that you transfigure them in every way possible. Lord, that you give them strength, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Lord, I ask you that you empower them, pour an anointing on them, that even their hands, when they touch them, God, will be able to rebuke the enemy. Lord, I pray that even their shadows, God, will cause individuals to get saved. That when people look upon them, Father, that they will see you. Lord, I ask you that you transfix, transfigure every particular part of them. That they're no longer them, Father, but they belong to you. Lord, I ask you that you have your way. That it says that in the Bible, God, that is the Christ within us. Glory to God. I thank you, Father, for everything that you're doing, everything that you're getting ready to do. I thank you for the way, and I thank you for the things that are going on in our lives, Father. We ask you for your blessing, and we ask you that you move in our direction. We thank you for every angel dispatch. We thank you for every good news that we have. And we thank you for the ones that we're getting ready to spread. And Lord, we thank you for the work that you have poured in front of us and the things that we're getting ready to do in you, with you, and around you. And we ask these things in Jesus' mighty name. Let the Redeemer of the Lord say amen. amen. Let the Redeemer of the Lord say amen again. Amen. amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Well, with this, with that being said, we're um, going to be going into our communion. But I'm going to give you a couple of seconds or so, you know, that um, if you have... Um, the kids to have them in front of you if you don't at this moment if you have a cracker and juice or, or something of that nature whatever it may be we are going to um, we're going to be breaking it even if it's a piece of bread and some some juice we're going to do some things right now because back in the day when the Lord had this he didn't have a cracker he had some bread amen glory to God I just um you know we, we it's a it's what we do and I want individuals to have that in, in thought and in total glory to God. I also want you to know, if you take communion and you know that there's some something that you need to get off your chest somewhere, right? Glory to God. You know, and if you if you can, you you know, I would like you to take the opportunity to 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 call and say something if you can't get with them and you don't know that they they're not there then i need you to speak it out then you know to the lord because guess what he knows all things hallelujah amen, amen. and, and where, where you can't get in touch with he can amen but first you know you need to make sure that it is, is good for you because i don't want you to um to 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 get sick to um you know, to not feel well because that's what it says in the Bible when it comes to taking communion. Amen. I want you to be a part of it. Amen. For those that are on the line with us and you do have one of these wonderful little cups here that we have. Hallelujah. Just remember that there's a little plastic piece right here in the front and then you kind of have to peel that back. And that reveals the, the wafer that's in there. Glory to God. See the wafer that's in there. It, it reveals the wafer. And um, and I'm, uh, um, you know, if you can peel that back a little bit, that'll be good. Um, but don't don't put it in your mouth just yet. And don't, and don't open up the juice just yet. Glory to God. Because I want to give you a second or two 
to make sure that if there's somebody or something or something that you said, you know, I want you to just either get in touch or even put it into your, your head and, 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 and silently tell you, say, so as nobody else needs to know what it is that you're talking about. It was just you and the Lord and the person. Glory to God. You know that there, that if there's any issues, any things, many, any thoughts, any, any attitudes that might ever happen, we will be asked for forgiveness, Lord. That all these things work in your way, Lord. We ask you that you move in every direction, God, for any argument, any, anything that is going to hinder us from doing what it is, anything that's going to hinder us from our transformation, Lord. We ask you that you do these things in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. We will be reading three scriptures today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to be starting with uh, 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verse 23. Hallelujah. And... Um, Hallelujah. I'm going to also be asking that after we read the Luke, at, before we read the last um, scripture, I'm going to um, have uh, Evangelist uh, Sunshine pray over the, the bread, and I would like to have Evangelist Diane pray over the, uh, the juice. Or the wine or whatever it may be um, that you have in front of you. Amen. Glory to God. So prepare yourselves for that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. As as we go along doing this in, in this year, um, the evangelists, all three of them, they'll probably be reading his, uh, the chapters and stuff and going through some things and we'll we'll do some stuff then. But glory to God for those who are taking communion online. We thank you for it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And here we go. 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verse 23 through 34. For I have received of the Lord, which I have delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also, he took the cup, which he had supped, saying, This is the cup in the New Testament of my body. This ye do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, Ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the blood, body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinking unworthily, eateth and drinking damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Many are weak, sickly among you, and many sleep. If, if you take this with the wrong contentions in your mind, you can get weak, sickly, and many are asleep means many have died. For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastised of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brother, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye may not come under condemnation, and the rest will I set in order. When... I come. Amen. Now we're reading John, glory to God, the 13th chapter, starting at the second verse. 
and we're reading up to the 17th. Amen. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Zacharias, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he was come from God and went to God, he rise from supper and laid aside his garments, and he took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he girded. Then come him he to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, He that is washed need not save to wash his feet, but is clean every with. And ye are not, are ye, ye are clean, but not, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore he said, Ye are not all clean. So after he washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and sat down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? You called me Master and Lord, and ye say well, for so, am, so I am. For I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than the Lord. Neither is he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Glory to God. We believe in feet washing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we're, we're, we're going to eventually get into doing that. But I believe we're going to have to have everybody have their own towel and their own particular thing. Because, you know, today's, today we, we, we have a lot of things that we don't want to, to spread between us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we're going to get ready to take the, um, the, um, communion glory to God and I'm going to be reading the um, Luke um, 22 19 and 20 but um at first I would like the evangelist sunshine to pray over the uh, bread and then uh, evangelist Diane will pray over the the wine or the juice amen
be able to get it right with those that were not right with something we said or did. And we come before you now asking your forgiveness and asking forgiveness for the other person involved. And Father God, that we will hear, adhere to your word, oh God, and just move all those things out of the way, Lord God, that should be there in us, oh God. We ask you to watch us clean. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. For those who have their um their 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 cracker, their their piece of bread, whatever it may be at this moment, glory to God. And you're taking communion with us, glory to God. I ask you to get this little piece ready. Glory to God. And I want you to open up your, your cup as well, if you can, so we can make it all one nice slow motion. We try to make it as easy as possible. Amen. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for this word and all those things that we're doing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And he took the bread and he gave things and he broke it. And he gave some to them and said, this is my body, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take ye all of it, the bread of life. Likewise, also he took after supper, saying, This is a cup of the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Drink ye all of it, the blood of Christ. And he said that after he finished, that they sung a little hymn on their way out. And they sung a song that brought joys to the gods. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood done sign my name. Oh, the blood. Jesus' blood. Oh, the blood done sign my name. Oh, the blood. Jesus' blood. Oh, the blood done sign my name. Oh, the blood done sign my name. One more verse. I'm a witness, a living witness, that the blood done sign my name. I'm a witness, a living witness, that the blood done sign my name. I'm a witness, a living witness, y'all, that the blood done sign my name. Oh, the blood done sign my name. Heavenly Father, in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you look upon each and every one of them, Father. God, I ask you that you bless them in every way possible. And God, I ask you that you overflow in their area. I ask you that you move like never before. Let them be transfigured, God. Let them be transformed, Father. God, by the newing of your mind, Father, by the newing of their self, by the breaking of the blood, by the drinking of the blood, by the breaking of the bread, Father, in the name of Jesus, that they shall be even greater than they were, Father. And I ask you that you pour your divine protection upon each and every one of them in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, have your way today, Father, that we move like never before, that we are now new creatures in you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. Amen.